to do this. So, hi everybody. Uh, I'm starting the recording, and thanks for um, being here for this new Jenkins Infra meeting. Um, a quick follow-up on the last week's discussion. Um, so, first regarding the infrastructure uh, sponsoring, um, we are still in the process to get sponsored by Amazon. So, right now, before working on Sierra Jenkins.io, I just try to, to be. Sure. I'm just waiting for the. Um, for the sponsoring to be officially enabled, so we can start um, talking about that. Um, it's the same for Fastly. So the last discussion that I had with Fastly is um, we have to sign a new contract, and they, they should send me a contract. Um, but right now, I still don't know uh, the bandwidth that we could have with Fastly, or what would be the, the, the terms of the contract. So it's still ongoing and still in discussion. Regarding the Azure, uh, the, the Azure accounts, uh, we managed to be around 6,300k uh, um, for the month. And so the billing is closing next week, so we should be around 7,000 for this month, which is way better than what we had last few months, which, is what, which was around 17,000 uh, for, the, for the Azure account. So we managed to, to reduce the cost, but we still have to, to, to do better right now. Um, regarding the discussion that we had last week reg uh, about ci.jenkins.io, um, we mentioned some work that, uh, that uh, Tim Jad did with the Packer image. The idea was to create a really small um, virtual machine image, uh, Packer, Packer image, so to, 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 to speed up the, the provisioning of those Jenkins agents. Um, <clears throat> we I spent some time to work on those, and now we are almost ready to, to, put, it, to put that in place. Um, the, the, the last thing that needs to be done is just to create a new, uh, to create new credentials specifically for that and, and then configure ci.jenkins.io. So um, this is something that should come in the coming days. Um, and otherwise, we did not um, spend more time with the GCASC um, configuration for ci.jenkins.io. The main reason to that is we are still waiting for the Amazon sponsorship, uh, sponsoring, sponsoring to be enabled. So right now, we don't spend a lot of time on Seattle Jenkins at all. Um, well, um, we also mentioned last week that we had to renew the Jira license. Um, this is done now. Um, so we should be able to, to upgrade it again. Um, this is something that we have to work on in the coming weeks. Um, but yeah, that's all for the follow up. Um, do you have any questions regarding this? Nope, so I guess we can start um, talking about the agenda items. Uh, where was my notes? So let first, uh, the first item is uh, the update center and GitHub integration. Uh, Who we'll bring that to the table? Uh, was it Oleg? Uh, might be, but I'm not sure. Uh, I, was I, it uh, recently? <laughs> Yeah, just a second, I'm opening uh, the notes. Oh, yeah, it was uh, planned for the previous meeting. Which I believe we discussed them and the changes are now integrated. Okay. So what need to be done for this? Those changes were the ones that allow us to do using topics to to manage the labels on, on plugins.jenkins.io, is that right? Yeah, that's right. So I'm not sure why it's on the agenda for this meeting because yeah, it was about putting okay. it for a meeting two weeks ago. Uh, we have some issues with infrastructure consistency. So just a second, I'll uh, reference the GitHub issue for that. Uh, but uh, yeah, overall it works. Um, our main problem is eventual consistency because uh, once you set the label, it takes uh, up to several days uh, to have uh, the plugin site updated, which is definitely not sustainable. We need to find uh, uh, the reason and to improve that. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's a separate topic. Okay. So just to be sure, the next uh, item in the agenda meeting are still old ones. I don't know if, he, if Alex, you want to, to talk about uh, duplicating Windows 2012 and the Windows API agents. Yeah, so um, we, we currently have uh, Windows 2012 um, VM set up for Azure. 
Um, and I was wondering what the consensus is on deprecating those. We have Windows 2019, um, and it's it's a smaller VM image and um, faster. So I would like to deprecate the Windows 2012 instances and move to only using the Windows 2019. Um, to, to me, I thought that you were, I mean, I thought for me that we were already, already deprecating those old Windows machines. So I think you can just remove the configuration from CI to the value. Okay, I will take care of that. Um, and regarding Windows CI agent testing? So Mark, I think has been the only one so far that has been doing some testing. He's brought up a couple things um, that I'm going to look into. So I don't think we're ready to move forward to general availability. Um, but, so I'll continue looking at those issues. Thank you. Yeah, no, no, the, the issue that I had flagged there may not be a general purpose issue. I don't know how many other plugins mandate that they must have command line Git installed on the Windows machine. Certainly, the Git plugins have to have it. They can't run their tests without it. But others, I know that we use JGit throughout the CI Jenkins IO infrastructure. So we've avoided installing command line Git on a number of machines as a result of that choice to use JGit. Yeah, I, I think it's a. I know of other plugins that do use Git command line. So I, I definitely think it needs to be resolved. So I, I will look into it for sure. Yep. Yeah. Okay, um, the next point is regarding the Jenkins Infra for Docker builds. Um, Jim, do you want to, to give a quick update here? Uh, yeah, um, you, might, you guys might have seen in the IRC and then Mark and uh, you, uh, I sent out the term sheet uh, for the S390 um, and I think Mark put that down on the governance meeting um, this week, I think on Wednesday, uh, so I guess tomorrow. Um, so that's good. I'm still waiting on terms of sheet, uh, term sheet for power resources. Uh, but once we have those, you guys should have full access to pull those into your infrastructure. Uh, in terms of the PR that's still open. Uh, I haven't done anything with that. Um, I guess we kind of really need to wait for these terms of use, uh, sheets to get you guys signed off and get you guys access to start testing the whole PR that I put out. Okay, um, just to, for the context, uh, so Jim James uh, sent us a terms of sheet um, that we need to sign. And so basically in the past, what we did is it was always on a personal basis where someone signed that document. And one of the reasons to move to the CDF was to have uh, a legal entity uh, above us. So we are mm -hmm. not uh, personally responsible for that anymore. Uh, obviously, um, the CDF, I think, is not really yet to sign that um, document. So the thing was to discuss tomorrow during the governance meeting. Uh, should basically should should I sign the contract or should I should we should we ask someone to the CDF? Um, but yeah, in this in this case in this document, I, I'm not really worried to sign it by myself. So yeah, we are just waiting tomorrow um, for that. Mm -hmm. Could you please uh, send um, a message to the developer mailing list? Because if you expect anything to be voted uh, on uh, the governance meeting, uh, there should be at least a uh, discussion before. Okay, I can. I can. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can. In this case, uh, it might be enough to just discuss it with uh, the Jenkins board, um, uh, even without voting in the public mailing list. Okay. Because I'm not sure what would be exactly the objective there. Uh, but uh, yeah. Yeah, so Olivier, if you're okay with it, I can do that, or you can do it, whichever you wish. Uh, if you can, yeah, if you can send that, if you can start a discussion on the main dev mailing list, that would be really awesome. All right, will do. It will help a lot, thanks. Uh, that's really it for me for the Jenkins infrastructure Docker builds. We, you guys, we, we talked about, I think briefly, we have access to power on either on Amazon or, uh, Microsoft's cloud service, or not power, sorry, ARM, ARM, sorry. Um, um, to be honest, I didn't check that. Normally, I, I think we should have we should have ARM for our resources, but I, I mean, totally forgot to check this. So on, so on uh, Azure, the they only have ARM 64, well, they have other ones, but they're part of this IoT Edge um, product, which um, I've tried to figure out if you could run like general workloads on. And mm -hmm. there's no clear documentation on that. So I'm still trying to figure it out. I may contact someone via the support and find out if you can just run general like Docker type 
uh, workloads on on there. Okay, so you, you the the main thing though is uh, they have ARM sixty four support, right? And that that's usually the common one going forwards, right? The Raspberry Pis and other ARM uh, platforms, right? It's I haven't really heard that many people still using ARM thirty two or I forget what the actual name of it is. Um, ARM v seven thirty two. Or ARM32 v7. Yes. That's what it is. ARM32 v7. Yeah, um, whatever we get, would it would be an improvement being compared to the current situation. Because mm -hmm. right now, we don't test with ARM at all. Okay. So and anything's really improvement. And I think uh, I think uh, the Docker, uh, like official pipeline uh, for like official images, I think they only have access to ARM64 too. I don't think they have access to ARM32 um i i can double check that um but um it might be only 64 so if we even if we get 64 it'll be good improvement yeah i think we need to figure out if we even need to support arm 32. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how many people would be using it okay so that, that's that's one thing we should look at too how much effort do we really want to spend on an arm 32. yeah we're so we're we're not officially, as far as I understood it, supporting any other 32-bit architecture, right? We've we've deprecated Win 32-bit Windows, haven't we? No, we didn't. No, oh, we did not. Because, okay. So our documentation basically says nothing about uh, bitness of operating systems we support, uh, and uh, with regards to Windows, it basically says nothing about uh, versions of Windows we support. So I still have an action item to create a job uh, or at least documentation page to document it. Uh, but yeah, right now, if you can uh, run Java somewhere, you can expect that Jenkins runs there, which is obviously not exactly what would happen on embedded platforms. So for, um, and also this is more for like Docker agents, uh, not for running the master on that platform necessarily. So I, I think this the support is a little bit different based on, on that as well. Now, going forward, we did talk about at one point in the platform SIG meeting that we would not be supporting Win32 with the new installer. The new installer is only a 64-bit. So that, that will come up at some point for Windows at least. Yeah. And, and I think that's quite reasonable. You you just described it. That would be the master running the Windows installer. Um, that seems very reasonable to me. Jenkins Jenkins running in a 32-bit world is, for agents, it may be interesting. I think it's less and less interesting for masters. Yeah. yeah but yeah, just changing installer doesn't remove uh, the support in principle, because one still can download Word file and get it running. Sure, it just won't be out of the box and out of the box. So personally, I'm not uh, that concerned about uh, Windows 32 state. Um, I do know that some people still use it uh, for ARM and for other new platforms uh, for which we had official support. Uh, even uh, if you want to do that, you should rather do it incrementally. Pete, that's uh, all I had to say um, for that um, it's good to know that we at least are moving forward with that. Okay, sounds like the next thing that you have to investigate. Um, uh, is there any other topic that we want to discuss? So I can bring mine. Mark, you are muted. Yes, uh, I wanted to talk about ci.jenkins.io monitoring, but I'll happily defer to after whatever topic you have. Mine is not a long topic. I just wanted to summarize what I've learned and make a proposal. So yeah, feel, feel free to feel free to to talk about the, the monitoring, and then I'll, I'll finish with my topic. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen if that's okay, because I it'll help me frame the conversation. What you sh let's see which screen am I sharing now? What do you see on your screens, everybody? Google Docs. Oh, good. Okay, so you see the right page then. Excellent. Yeah. Super. So um, I've spent a few days looking at, at monitoring and trying to understand our monitoring. And what I realize is we've already got just about everything we need conceptually to do a, a good job of monitoring. My proposal is let's take the systems 
and the concepts we've already got and extend them. So Datadog is a world-class monitoring platform. Uh, we get it for free and it works great. Let's just keep yeah. using it. It's yeah, an amazing just, piece of work. Um, I just, my, my, my only question is regarding, because I saw that Datadog uh, made several updates recently. I think someone uh, on Datadog started working on the Datadog plugin because in the past, um, it only shipped very few metrics. So it was not that useful. And so I started investigating Prometheus. So um, on the release that CIDA Jenkins that you, I'm using Prometheus. So if you want to have a look uh, with the kind of data that you have there, uh, I think the main difference is that the Datadog plugin is just ex exporting um, specific metrics, where the um, the Prometheus it's using the the metrics plugin or something like that. Uh, there is one one specific plugin that exports a lot more more metrics. Um, I can I can I can find the plugins after the meeting. Thank you. I hadn't I hadn't thought about Prometheus. I think it's valid to consider. Consider my thought right now was I think we'll get faster results and better results quickly if we stay with the solutions we've got rather than making a, a shift of solution. I I'd actually started my own monitoring system on my local network and was using it, but. Realize Datadog is worlds in a way better than anything we, I might consider recreating. It does amazing things in terms of dashboarding and measurements. Uh, it's I, I'm quite impressed actually. Coming from a biz prior to the current employer, I was working for a company selling those kind of solutions, and Datadog is an awesome competitor in that space. So they don't, do a good yeah. job. So don't, don't, don't get me wrong, uh, the Datadog is really awesome and I think I sent you an invitation to the Datadog account so you should be able to, to, to maybe I, create a dashboard or look at the monitoring and maybe do some other thing. Um, we can organize a session specifically for the Datadog. My, the, the, the reason why I deployed the Primitives plugin was because I was missing some specific metrics um, mm. which was provided by by the Prometheus plugin. Um, but the main difference is that um, those metrics are exported to, to a Grafana dashboard that you have to maintain yourself. And obviously it's time consuming if you want to be sure that the service is always up and running. So right now it's more uh, for testing purposes, but um, yeah, I would be curious to see how the Datadog uh, plugins evolve over time. Great, okay. Yeah, so one place where the Datadog plugin actually could offer something is this second item, the canary jobs. So this was a concept that Tyler Croy and, and Olivier had started in using what, what are listed as infrastructure acceptance tests. There are a set right now of four or five tests that check very specific things should work end to end. And I think that concept is a good one we should teach those tests to notify Datadog so that they can, they can then raise an alarm if they start failing. So that we have a relatively few in the hundreds and hundreds of jobs, those relatively few will raise alarms to us so that we know something is seriously wrong with the infrastructure. Okay. Uh, that's one I'll, I'll negotiate, I'll work with you, Olivier, to try to get it. The other is that in choosing which checks we should make, We've already got 13 JIRA tickets based on past outages. And nice. I think that's a good beginning. So my thought is I'm going to create an Epic if we don't already have one that tracks um, these, these monitoring improvements. And then the last and actually probably the most important one is be sure that we've got more people looking. And that I think is probably the, the single most important thing. The other things will automate, but human beings can do an awful lot to help us as we get surprises and learn how to monitor better. And that was so, all that I had. Questions okay. or comments? Yeah, my just uh, comments. I don't know if you saw that there is a Jenkins Infra slash Datadog repository where we automate uh, checks. Uh, basically, we use Terraform to automate uh, those checks. Um, so yeah, feel free to have a look at this. And uh, usually it's easier to first look at uh, the Datadog dashboard, create those checks manually, and then export those checks um, in Terraform. So we have a way to, to share those. and. Situation. And, right, I, and, and I also shared the, the plugin. So uh, when I said, so there is one plugin uh, called Metrics um, that export few, few, few data. And so this is the one that I think the Prometheus plugin is using. So it, basically the Prometheus, the Prometheus plugin is just a way to export those data, those metrics to, 
to, to, to Grafana, for example. Okay. Yep. And yeah, so there is a bunch of such plugins, and uh, yeah, one of the issues they try uh, to solve is to bridge pull uh, monitoring services and push monitoring services, because there are some periodic jobs which collect statistics and prepare that on demand, so that we can uh, serve the data quickly to any service. Thank you. So I would get it. I would just share my screen as well. Uh, I think that means I have to stop sharing. Okay, go ahead. Um, can you see my browser? Yes. Perfect. So basically, uh, with the recent uh, act, uh, with the recent issues that we had with uh, package of Jenkins at IO, the update center, and mirrors the Jenkins at IO, I spent a little bit more time to investigate different solutions that we could put in place to reduce the loads on um, <coughs> package of Jenkins at IO. So right now we have one machine located on the Amazon account, and that machine is hosting um, so the, the three services that I mentioned and um, more the, the, really, the, the, the packaging jobs and tasks and so on. So that machine is, um, has a lot of things, um, is doing a lot of things, and also is quite outdated because Mirror Brain is not maintained since years now. So we have old version of Python, Ruby, and so on. So I try to find ways to, to split the different services running on that machine on different container services. Um, but obviously, the main challenge that I have right now is they are all kind of uh, interconnected. So this, the, the, the screen that you see right now is one of the services that we could use to replace Mirror Brain. So the idea here is that um, we have Mirror Bits that contains all the, the files that we want to provide through the mirrors. And also, basically, you can just browse the files uh, on it. So, for example, as you can see here, I just synchronize uh, one of the mirrors. So there are two possibilities. Either we have mirrors available for specific files. So let's say, for example, I click on Red Hat and just select one. Oops, this one is not working, obviously. Um, and then we'll take a different one. So if the file if the file is so basically what mirror bits does it's create a, a hash of the file and if the file with the correct hash is available on one of the mirrors then it gives you an opportunity to download directly from a mirrors close to your location and if the files is not located on a remote rem mirrors um, it just gives you a, a, an errors so it does not work so right now I configure my mirror bits. Um, with uh, six mirrors, as you can see here. Um, so it's only working on HTTPS right now, so we can really enforce this, uh, for example. Um, and it's really easy to deploy. Um, the, the main thing is, if we plan to, to use mirror bits, we have to modify the, the, the script that we use when we release a new Jenkins version um, in order to push the new artifacts directly on mirror bits. And obviously, then we have to update the different mirrors. So that's one of the works that I did. And your bits also provide few views. Uh, view. So this one is just provides uh, all the mirrors that you can use. Um, you have another one that gives you just a stat. So if you just put um, stats at the end of the URL, you can see how many times I downloaded these uh, specific packages. And otherwise, you have a list of the different mirrors. Um, so this is one of the um, service. There is an open PR on the repository Jenkins infra slash charts. Um, so right now, I'm not sure yet the way we, we, we push the data on that service. So either it's a pool based where we fetch the data from a, a remote mirrors or we push the data directly on your bits and directly when we release. So that's the main thing that I have to, to figure out right now. Um, the second service um, that I work on is a way to deploy more mirrors. So just a hand chart. Basically what it does, it just um, run on a regular basis uh, rsync uh, command to download from a remote mirrors. And so we can just have um, um, we can just have more mirrors. 
the, the, the main reason why I started working on this is because right now we have archives at jenkinsia.org uh, running on the Rackspace accounts, and then we need to move that service somewhere else. So um, initially I thought that it could be just a simple mirrors, and then I realized that uh, archive um, has a lot more data than just mirrors. So um, I still have to, I'll probably have to deploy and provision uh, uh, um, an Azure disk and move all the data on that Azure disk. So I would probably move archive.jenkinsia.org to Azure uh, from Rackspace. Um, one of the other services that is also running on the current release, um, mirrors, mirrors the Jenkins.io is repo. Um, so, so this is the service. So this is a different service that I um, also started working. So basically, in this case, we just have ways to. Um, bum, bum, bum. So in this specific case, we just generate website for Red Hat, Debian, and Suze. Um, so people can add those packages directly into the operating system. Um, but I still need more time to test um, how it's working. Uh, if it's um, if it keeps working, but yeah. So basically, what I wanted to share is that um, there is some activities about the way we deploy um, package of Jenkins and Mirror and Mirror Brains uh, and Mirrors the Jenkins So if you have any inputs um, or thoughts or suggestions, um, I think it's the right time. So Olivier, you you mentioned repo and i thought i saw what looked like an artifactory image is our artifactory instance at all S sorry being this, changed here no 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 sorry so um, I, I mentioned repo but i want to say package thank you that io so see. yeah repo so we are not changing the artifactory this is just the maven repository that i deployed in the release environment so i can just test and it was easier to deploy than artifactory um with the setup that i have but this one, I mean, we won't change with the Jenkins.io. It's mainly package the Jenkins.io, mirror the Jenkins.io, and um, and the update center. But regarding the update center, I'm not there yet. The main reason why it's not easy to to work on those is because we have quite a lot of scripts um, that are either uploading or downloading packages via rsync or SSH. Um, with cron job and stuff like this. So uh, before before deploying and for example, before switching from mirror brains to mirrors, I just wanted to be sure that I don't break uh, or lose data in the, the migration process. Um, I just have another question. So if you don't have a, any question on this part, um, I would be more interested by, um, in this case, more about um, Alex Herm. So um, I had a look to the, the release environments. So I fixed, I, fixed, uh, I fixed a few things. So from the release process part, um, sorry. So from the release process part, I had some um, resources issues. So I just deployed bigger machines. So as you can see, it goes from three hours to release um, Jenkins to one hour 35. So right now it's working again um, as expected. So if someone wants to test the output generated by this, I would be really happy. But the more importantly is that I worked on the packaging um, part, which is here. And so in this case, I don't remember, uh, Alex, maybe you can, uh, you don't, you remember, I don't remember um, if Windows artifacts are signed or not, or maybe what would be the best way to verify this? Um, uh, I, let me take a look, because I think you can, if when you download the MSI, you can right click and look at the properties and it'll tell you whether it's signed or not. Okay. Um, yeah. Lately signed. Sorry? Uh, all artifacts are likely signed. Uh, on the new uh, release process? Yeah, yeah so th the this is, one. yeah, this is not KK's uh, release process. This is the, the new process. So um, we just need to verify. Um, I'll, I'll take a look. I, I have a uh, VPN set up so I can, I can look at it. Okay. So everything is located in the artifactories. Um, yeah. So, oh, sorry, uh, everything is located in artifacts. So there is a okay. link on here. I will take um, a look. 
and otherwise um, the main thing that I've been working. So because we don't have the code sign, we don't have access to the code signing certificates yet. Um, I'm currently working on the publishing parts. And one of the things um, that I'm really heavily relying on is instead of using Ersync or SSH to publish uh, artifacts somewhere, I'm using Azure Blob Storage. So I can just mount the Azure Blob Storage directly in the release um, pipeline. And so I just, ju I just do like um, move files from here to there and so on. And it's also the same Azure Blob Storage that I'm using in the, um, the other services. So I can mount the same, the same, the same um, files in multiple locations. And so it's, it's really simplified the way we are publishing um, artifacts because as soon as, for example, as soon as um, the, the artifact is generated in the R Jenkins instance, it's copy in the, the Azure Blob Storage and then mirror bits um, can use the same um, storage. And so the file is directly available in mirror bits and also directly available in a package, um, in the package um, the Jenkins that Jenkins.io, for example. So, yeah, that's that's what I'm working on right now. So, yeah. Otherwise, I think um, I covered all the things that I wanted to show you. So, if you don't have any more question, I propose to stop here. Um, there is one last thing. Sorry. Um, so, Mark and I uh, will do a small session about configuring SSH access and um, using the VPN on the Jenkins Infra project. So if you are interested to participate uh, in this, uh, feel free to, to say it. The idea is we need to do some knowledge transfer, so to take some time to, to ask questions and to be able to answer those questions. Thanks everybody for your time um, and see you on IRC.